You're Always Alone, part two. It's fitting that I would make this video as I'm, we went for a run and now I'm hiking up the rest of this mountain pretty much alone. Like there's really no one, it's hot. So that's why people aren't here. But I wanted to make kind of a part two of this video to talk about one of my most impactful videos in the past, which is this idea that you're always alone. And I think this is such an important concept because you know, what I found myself doing, and I think the human experience is attaching to things and thinking that something or someone is going to make us complete or fix that problem of loneliness that's within us. And, you know, I talked about it in terms of people before, and that's certainly still very true, right? Uh, you know, no matter what relationship you have in your life, you're going to be on your own, right? Like no matter how close you get to someone, they're not gonna be in your mind. I talked about, I think, in the other video about how like if you get sick, they can't feel that sickness, right? Like no one can help you. Like being sick, really sick, is one of the most liberating experiences, right? It's also one of the most scary because there's a lot of things that people can help you with, but being sick, maybe being on your deathbed, nobody can help you, no one can save you, no one can do anything to really alleviate your condition. They can only be by your side, but they can't be there inside with you. And that is your condition all the time. We just try to fool ourselves thinking that someone will come along or some relationship or this person or this thing, this object or success will make us not be alone. But the reality is that you are experiencing your life in your body. And and, and you're the only one who can do that. You're the only one who has your thoughts. You're the only one who has access to your thoughts and your mind and your experience. And I'll tell you one scary thing that I was going through when I was going through my divorce, perhaps the most scary thing was this realization that like all the past I had, like the traveling and the history of my life of the last 20 years, like the real history of my life, not just what's on YouTube, although that mirrors it, that there's only two people in the world who really share that, who really know my real story. And one of them is gone, right? I suppose you could look at death as the same way, but I was scared knowing that I'm the only one now who has my story. And I think you could probably feel that at any breakup because you have this kind of life story together, right? You have these shared experiences, especially when it goes on for a long time, like 20 years. And then you're like, well, you know, I'm the only surviving person, right? Who can relate to this experience, right? I mean, maybe that other person's out there, but you know, it just makes you realize that it, you thought you were experiencing those experiences together with someone, but really you were experiencing them alone. Just like all experiences, you always experience an experience alone. And you know, this might seem nihilistic at first, right? You might think, well, that's kind of a shitty way of looking at the world, John. You're always alone. No one could be with you. No one could truly, truly love you with a an unconditional love. Well, it's better to face the reality of that. And it's not a bad thing. It just, it gives you more freedom because you see, when you're depending on someone else and someone else's love and someone else's mood or being with someone or some object, you have attachments and those attachments bind you and they prevent you from becoming free. And it, you know, I talked about in a lot of videos about my biggest desire, or my most valued attribute is the ability to be free. That's what I value the most. And I think I understood it at some different levels. I've got, you know, the three levels of freedom that I talk about, uh, the freedom to the lowest level of freedom where you're intimidated, you can't do something, you're embarrassed, you're shy, you're afraid. The second level where you do things because you have to, where you start facing the fears, talking to the girl, doing the thing, but you feel compelled to do them. You must keep on proving to yourself. And that's why you do them. And then the third level of freedom where you do things because you want to. We don't feel compelled or prevented from doing anything. That is the true freedom. But there's more to freedom than that, right? The real, true, true freedom is a complete detachment from the outcome of things. It's for me to record this video and not really care how it comes out, right? There's a 
there's a, a little voice in the back of my head right now that's saying, yeah, I don't know, John, are you rambling? I don't know, John, is this ver video really worthy of you're always alone part two? Like, shouldn't you be saying something deeper than this? Don't you have more to say to this? Maybe you should just delete this video after you're done recording it, right? You see what that is doing to me? It's, it is the primary thing in my life, in your life, that is making you not free. And so the concept of you're always alone is about freedom. It's really this concept that, that says, look, all right, the moment that you detach from everything, and that doesn't mean not care about people, not love people. In fact, the, the, by contrast, it actually means that you love and care with reckless abandon because you don't fear consequences, right? So most of the loves and most of the things we enjoy or attach ourselves into this life, we attach them based on uh, something that we expect to get from them, right? And we're afraid of losing those attachments. So because we fear losing those attachments, what we'll do is we'll guard our hearts, we'll be conservative in what we're doing, right? I'm recording a video in public. I don't care. If I did care and I said, oh, there's someone walking by, now I need to be a little bit more quiet. I don't wanna be embarrassed by someone seeing me recording a video in public. Then what will happen? I will, I will be attached, attached to my ego, attached to this desired outcome and it will inhibit my freedom. If I'm totally free, I can do what I want. I can record this video and I don't care. And I don't care what someone walking by thinks. I don't care what someone watching this video thinks, right? That is the true sense of freedom. And that is the true sense of you're always alone. Like if you really view this world as you're always alone and you're just one consciousness experiencing this life and you know, the duality of this says that not only are you always alone, but you're never alone, right? Let's, we could delve into that being that you are one with everything, but also you're just one, right? You're just one that's experiencing a delusion of multiple things. You know, that's, that's the real deep reality. But if you can bend your mind around the idea that you're always alone, you're the only consciousness that's, that is experiencing your life, right? Then you can truly be free and to truly enjoy the experiences that you're having because they're not dependent on anything else, right? You might say, well, aren't you attached to your, your partner? Aren't you attached to your wife or your children? No. I mean, yes, of course I am. Should I be? No, I can love them and I should love them. But what gets in the way of my loving them is, is not being, me being not attached to them. It's me being attached to them and being attached to outcomes. You see, if I have a wife, which I do, and she's wonderful and beautiful, okay? And I say to myself, look, I'm not attached to her in the sense that I love her, right? I desire to be with her. I enjoy the, the time that we have together and the family that we're building and the experiences that we're building and how we're experiencing life together. We're both alone in our own kayaks, but we're kind of going through, you know, her kayak journey is not the exact same as mine, but we're kind of like choosing to paddle our kayaks next to each other. You know, from her viewpoint, no matter how close she is, it's still not my viewpoint. There's still a little bit of a different angle. She still feels the wind differently. Her perceptions make her see things differently. She chooses to align her consciousness or her awareness on different objects, different things. So if I realize that and I say, look, I love having her in my life. I like to continue having her in my life, but it's not for me to choose. It is for me to just experience and to give the love and to make the choices of what I do and what I think and how I choose to feel and how I choose to live. But it's not me. It's not, it's, I don't get to choose her response. I don't get to choose her reaction. And I don't get to try and control it, right? This means being free. It means being myself. That's the, the bane of pickup artists, right? I'll be yourself, man. Oh, because you're not really being yourself. You're, you're being this goofy version. Right? Like the true version of you is a masculine man if you're watching this video and you're man. You have a lion's core inside you. You just don't know it. You haven't tapped into that yet. And what I'm trying to do with these videos in this channel is to strip away what is not you. And what will remain will be something fantastic because you'll tap into the universal 
consciousness, the universal, the masculine father of the universe that is within you. I know it sounds a little weird and like all mumbo jumbo type of stuff, but hey, it's true. But regardless, even if you don't want to go there, just recognize that the things that are causing you the most pain in life, right, are the attachments. And those attachments spur from this attempt to not be alone. And the moment that you can let go of that and you can say, okay, you know, there's people that can paddle their kayak next to me. And there's people that we both agreed to kayak our paddles next to each other for as much as we can, because we enjoy being able to talk about the things that we're seeing and share those things and, and, and being able to show each other love. But I'm not attached to this thing. If this thing were to change, it would not be the end of me, right? If you can get that into your head and you can truly be alone and be comfortable with being alone, then you free yourself from all those attachments and you free yourself from all the pain and the suffering that you go through in order to hold on to those attachments. Because we're either trying to gain attachments or trying to hold on to them. That is what we all do. And yeah, no one is ever gonna achieve the perfect level of that, maybe not, I don't know. Like no one, it's not realistically conceivable. It's not something that you should say, oh, I have to be perfect at this because the reality is you probably won't be, but you can become better at it and you can recognize it. And, and really the only way to make any kind of advancement is through awareness, understanding, right? Awareness is uh, when, when you know, when you, when you see things that you didn't see, it's when your consciousness expands to beyond the narrow focus that you've chosen. And, and the, the wider that, that beam becomes, the more awareness that you have, right? And so, again, getting back to the topic of you're always gonna be alone, there's no way to fix this. There's no way to cure this, right? I mean, you've tried, I've tried, we've all tried. Did, you, you may have felt like you did. And then, you know what happens when you feel like you did? When that person betrays you, or they don't do exactly what you want, or you realize that, you know, how many times have you been disappointed because you're like, oh, this person, they showed me that they didn't care by not reading my mind and doing what I want. That's when you know, you already know you're alone. You're, you were kidding yourself, pretending like you weren't alone, right? You were alone. You, you just were pretending, okay? So as soon as you stop doing that and start to realize, be okay with that and realize that there is no way to escape this, there's nothing that you can do to escape this, but everyone is in that same condition, then you can have more empathy for other people. You can have more freedom. You can love without, uh, without holding back. Because again, I wanna harp on this, because I know this is really the biggest pushback on detachment, on, on non-attachment, really, not detachment, really, it's non-attachment, is this. Is that, doesn't it mean I don't care enough about people or love them, right? If I really love someone, could I survive? I should be able to not survive without them. You don't have a choice, <laughs> right? You can make the illusion that says, I cannot survive without you. And you can tell the person that. And it's, I think it comes from the right place. God bless you for it, for showing that degree of commitment and love and trying to make a person feel like they're not alone. But the reality is if that a person leaves your life, whether voluntarily, through sickness, death, through whatever circumstances, then you will survive. You will be back to being alone because you already were alone. And so the, the sooner that you can accept that and just say, you know what? By being alone, I can actually love more. Because again, I, I'll, I'll challenge you and I'll say, okay, what is the biggest thing that is holding back your love? Like why, like if you've had a girlfriend or wife or, or you know, romantic experience, right? Why did you not just bomb her with love? Like what was holding you back from giving your true expression of love? Now I'm not talking about like being needy and like love bombing someone in order to get something back, right? To get them to, uh, to like you back or to, to show that they like you. But what, what prevented you from really opening up your heart and giving them all that you have to give, expecting nothing in return? Because that is what love is. What prevented you was the risk involved with that? Because what could happen if you do that? Well, one, they could interpret that as neediness. <laughs> they won't, they won't, because it's not, because it's coming from a different place, but your fear says that they might. 
too, they could just reject you. They could just, you could pour out your heart. You could be vulnerable and open and share the things that, that share your love and, and really just love with a reckless abandon. And they could reject that. They could choose to not accept that or appreciate that. Or third, they could not show it back. And that's probably the most devastating of all because if you really examine your motives most of the time, it's because you're wanting, you know, you say I love you to someone. If they don't say I love you back, you're insulted. Why? Does their love for you influence your love for them? It shouldn't. You want unconditional love, yet you don't give it. How does that work? It's because of the attachment. It's because you haven't accepted that you're alone. But if you do accept that you're alone, and I'll wrap this video up, I promise. But if you do accept that you're alone, if you say, look, I am alone. That is my condition. It is not a curable condition. It's not a bad condition. It's a wonderful condition because it means that I have the opportunity to have complete freedom. Okay? And you and you come from this place and then you say, I have someone that I love, that I want to share my life with, that I care about deeply. So I I don't I don't have an attachment in the sense that like if something bad happens then it does happen and I will accept that and I will allow it to be what it is you have no resistance to that now if you try to love them what what consequence could come you're already alone <laughs> you, you're so so you can't become alone because you're already alone so what could happen right now do you need them to say I love you back no because it doesn't fix anything. Like you, you're trying to get someone to say, I love you back. It's trying to fix something. It's trying to fix you being alone. Let's be honest. That's what you're trying to do. It doesn't fix it. If they reject your, your love, does that matter? No, because it, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. And if they sense it as some kind of neediness or it makes them feel like you're weak or pathetic or they don't like you as much, does that even matter either? No, it doesn't matter right so now you have this freedom to operate from your true sense of being and who you are and, and again i'm not saying this because i'm an expert at this i'm saying this because i've had this realization and i'm trying to live that way in my life but it's hard because the attachments get in the way because we we have risk i did a video just a few days ago or I don't know what order it'll come in. Maybe it'll come out of order because I'm doing a little edits on that video because I want to. But, you know, I, I was talking about this idea of the synthetic spirituality. And I was talking about how now that I'm making these videos and I don't really care about the outcome, I'm not trying to make these massively produced videos and trying to get these views and trying to come up with the titles and the thumbnails that are going to get the most amount of clicks. I'm just free to just talk about what I want. And it feels so good, right? Like I feel good again. And that's the taste of the freedom, right? And this always happens to me, right? Like I, I've had this happen multiple times, especially with YouTube videos, where I've said, all right, I just, this, this, these videos, doing these videos is too stressful for me. I'm gonna cut down. I'm gonna stop doing videos or I'm gonna reduce the frequency. The last time this happened, I think, I was doing one video a week and I made a video on the Simple Programmer channel before this channel, you know, I said, I'm gonna start doing one video a month. And you know what I did the next day? I released two videos. And I started doing two videos a day <laughs> for like the next year or so. Why? Why would, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does if you listen to what I'm saying in this video. Why does it make perfect sense? Because once I let go and I started making videos for the sake of making videos and I didn't feel like I had to make these videos. I did them because I wanted to and, and each video didn't count as much because if you're doing two a day, then who the fuck cares? Like you have two more tomorrow. Then I felt the freedom to do that. It didn't feel like a burden anymore. Anyway, this video has gone on way too long. Um, but yeah, I mean, just if you want to watch the, the old video of You'll Always Be Alone, I think you should watch that. I say some slightly different things there. Uh, you can find it. Uh, maybe I'll put a link to it. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link. I'll, I'll do the work for you guys if I remember it. If I don't, just leave someone leave a comment and put the video there. But, you know, I'll, I'll say one more thing, <laughs> okay? I promise this is the end of the video. If you guys like this kind of content and you like these videos, subscribe if you haven't already. Like the videos, you know, share the videos. L let's keep this going. Like, go back and watch the back catalog of videos of these daily videos so that... 
I, I, I want to reach more people. You know, that's that's what I want to do. Again, it's not about the, the outcome necessarily, but you know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was talking about how like you need to have a mission, right? And what what is my mission, right? It's like it has to be not just money or something like that. It has to be like what are you trying to do in the world? And I think for me, you know, I said uh, I'm teaching men how to be men. It's really like, yeah, it's teaching men how to be men, like whole men, right? Like a a spiritual man, a next level man, like that, that, you know, to, to elevate yourself to a higher level, right? To unlock these things that get rid of the pain and suffering and allow you to have better experience in life. That's what I'm trying to do. So I have to reach people to do that. And if you want to help me do that, I appreciate it. If you want to send me an email and express your thanks, I appreciate that too. I don't get to read or respond to all the emails, but I do appreciate that, that kind of stuff. And if you ever want some coaching with me, I'm available. Just shoot me an email and, and we'll work something out. I've got some, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching and some other things that I can share with you uh, because I, I, I love doing this work, to be honest with you. I do.